Hi guys, in this video we are going to learn the decrease key operation and the delete operation in Fibonacci heaps. In the previous video we learned how to perform the delete minimum operation or the extract minimum operation in case of Fibonacci heaps. So let us look at these two operations and then calculate their time complexities. So let us start with the decrease key operation. So I'm considering this Fibonacci heap as an example to explain you the decrease key operation. And as you know, in case of Fibonacci heap, uh, there is a pointer that is always pointing to the minimum element of the heap, right? So there is this pointer that is always pointing to the minimum element. And our operation is the decrease key operation, right? In which, in, in the Fibonacci heap H, we change a node whose value is x to k. And here I have denoted the marked nodes with a black circle and they are dotted, right? Whereas the unmarked nodes are undotted like 33, 68 and 64. And the marked nodes are 28, 59 and 39 in this example, right? So what are marked nodes? So marked nodes are actually those nodes who have actually lost a child, right? Whereas unmarked nodes are those nodes who have not lost any child, like they have not lost any of their child. Whereas marked nodes are those nodes who have lost a child, right? So in the first case, let us decrease 37 to 31, right? So let us decrease the value of this node 37 to 31. So suppose I change the value of this node 37 to 31, then what I'll consider is that is the heap ordering property or the property which says that for a particular node, all its descendants should be greater than that node in case of min heap, right? So this tree, so this tree is actually following a min heap property. Same goes with the rest of the two trees, right? So I need to check if the min heap property is being violated or not. So how I'll check, uh, so how I'm going to check that? I'll check at the parent of my target node. So let us consider this node as X. I'll check at the parent of x, which is 29, and if I find it to be smaller than my updated value of x, that is k, and if I find it to be smaller than 31, that means the property is not violated. That means the heap ordering property is not violated. So in that case, I don't do anything. So I've actually uh, finished this decrease operation when I found that the decrease value is actually greater than the parent and it is not violating the heap ordering property. So let me write down this case over here that when the parent is actually smaller than the decreased value. So basically when the parent of x is smaller than x, so this is the parent of x that is 29, it is smaller than x, so we just exit. We don't have to perform any other step because it is not violating the heap ordering property, right? So now let us decrease the node with value 31 to 23. So we have to decrease this node's value from 31 to 23, right? So I'll make it 23, okay? So again, this is my x and we have decreased the value from 31 to 23. Now what we will do? We will look at the parent. And if we find the parent's value is actually smaller than x, as in this case, we will just exit. But in this case, the parent's value is 29 and it is greater than 23. So in this case, what do we do? In this case, we actually remove, we actually cut this node from here, right? We cut this node 23 from here and we add it in the root list, okay? We add this 23 to the root list. Then what we do is that we check the parent of the node that we have cut. And if we find it to be unmarked, as you can see, 29 is an unmarked node. So in that case, we mark the parent, right? Why we, why we are marking the parent? Because it has lost one of its child, right? This 23 has gone to the root list, right? So what we did over here, we checked the value of the decreased element that was 23 with its parent. We found out that the parent's value that is 29 was greater than 23. So that is violating the heap ordering property. So what we did in that case, we cut this 23 from here and we added it to the root list. And because we took away one child from 29, so we need to mark that node, right? Because it has lost a child. Okay, so let me write down that case over there. 
So what we do in case 2, when parent of x, 29, was greater than 23 or x and the parent is unmarked. Here initially the parent was unmarked. So in that case, we cut x and add it to the root list and we mark the parent. So we have marked the parent over here. So that was our case 2. Now what can be the other case? Another case can be when actually the parent of x is greater than x or the decreased value and the parent is marked, right? So in that case, how will we show that the parent has lost a child? So let us do an example for that as well. So now let us decrease 66 to 4, right? To, to look at another case. So uh, this is 66, right? So in every case, first of all, what I do is that I decrease that value. So in this case, I'll decrease 66 and I'll make it 4, right? Now I'll compare 4 with its parent, right? And I'll see is the parent smaller or greater than x? So here you can see this is 59. So the parent is greater than x. So the parent of x is greater than x, right? So when parent of x is greater than x, so we discard case 1. But the parent is actually already marked, right? So the parent is not unmarked. Parent is actually already marked, right? This parent is already marked. So in this case, what we do is that, first of all, we cut this node that has been decreased as we did in case 2 with 23. So we cut this entire node from here. So basically this entire subtree will be attached at the root, like how 23 was attached at the root. So this entire, because we are cutting from here between the parent and the node itself. So this, uh, this anything below it, anything below it or the subtree rooted at x will be attached at the root. So let us do that. So we will attach it, the entire subtree at the root, right? So as we have cut it, uh, so we will remove it from here and we will also cut the parent of that node, of that decreased node and we will attach it to the root list, right? So we will also cut this 59 and we will attach it to the root list. And we will continue this process of cutting the parents and attaching them to the root list until we find an unmarked node, right? Let me write down the steps and then I'll come back and complete this. So in such type of case, what we do is that, first of all, we cut x and add it to the root list, right? So this is my x. So I cut x or the subtree that is rooted at x and I add this entire subtree rooted at x or rooted at 4 in my root list. So let me do that. So I add the subtree rooted at x in my root list, right? So this will, so this subtree will be removed from here. Then what is the next step in this case? So here there is a loop in which what I do? I cut and add parent to root list. So I also have to cut this parent and I have to add it to the root list and then I have to unmark the parent. So the parent is initially marked. I have to add it to the root list and then unmark it. Okay. So let me add the parent to the root list. So I'll add on this side, right? I'll add over here 59 and the parent is unmarked, right? It is not dotted. So the parent has changed from marked to unmarked. How, so I have to repeat this process until, until I find an unmarked parent on my path upwards or I reach the root list. So I have to repeat this process of adding the parent to the root list and unmarking the parent until I find an unmarked parent or I reach the root list. So now I'm over here. So again, the parent or uh, of this node that was cut is actually again marked. It is not unmarked, right? So what I do over here, I cut the parent, right? I cut the parent and I add it to the root list. So I, I add this entire subtree rooted at this parent or rooted at 28 to my root list, right? So, so let me add it over here. So 28 will come over here and it will be unmarked. I have to unmark uh, the root of whatever I'm cutting and 29 will come over here. And this will be marked, right? I'm not unmarking this thing, the child, because I've, un I've actually cut this. This was the parent in the path of words. So I'll remove it from here, right? And then we are reaching at this point, right? At the parent. Now I see 
that my parent is actually unmarked and at the same time I have reached the root list, right? So we come out of this loop, right? So these were the three cases that we can encounter while performing the decrease key operation, right? Uh, now if you try to analyze the time complexity of this operation, especially in this third case, right? Because the first two cases are actually taking order of one time, right? Both of them are taking order of one time because in the first case we are just exiting by decre after decreasing the value and in the second case after decreasing the value of x we are actually cutting that node and adding it to the root list so that will take constant amount of time but in the third case after decreasing the value and cutting it in the first step we are actually going into this loop and this loop how many times can it run it can run of the order of the number of nodes that we encounter on our path upwards and that is equal to the order of the height of our Fibonacci heap and the height of the Fibonacci heap can be order of n right when n is the number of nodes in the Fibonacci heap so the height can go as much as the order of n right and in each iteration the operations that we are performing that is cutting the parent and adding it to root list and unmarking the parent these are actually order of one operations so our total time complexity is actually order of 1 into n right because a number of nodes because the height is actually order of n so these operations so these iterations we can pro, uh, perform n number of times so this is basically order of n but this is the asymptotic time complexity but let us look at the amortized time complexity of the decrease key operation in Fibonacci heaps as it gives a tighter bound and a better estimation of this operation. So as I have already told, the potential function of Fibonacci heap is t of h plus 2 into m of h, where t of h is the number of trees in the heap and m of h is the total number of marked nodes in our Fibonacci heap. So we have already learned how to calculate the amortized time complexity using potential method in my previous videos. So this is equal to amortized cost is equal to actual cost plus change in potential, right? So now we are considering only case 3 because case 3 seems to be increasing the uh, time complexity of this decrease key operation, right? So just think of one iteration in this loop, right? So in one iteration, as you can see, we are just performing order of one operations, right? Both these are order of one operations. So the actual cost is order of one, right? Or you can also write it as 1, right? So the actual cost is 1 or, or a constant plus, now what is the change in potential? So as you can see, in a single iteration, what we are doing? We are cutting and adding a parent to root list. Or basically, when we add something to the root list, what we are doing? When we suppose add this thing to the root list, we are actually increasing the number of trees in our Fibonacci heap, right? So this th value will actually increase by 1, right? So my th of final minus th initial should be 1, right? Because uh, basically my number of trees will increase by 1 in a single iteration. Then we unmark the parent. So when we unmark the parent, my mh of f minus mh of i will be minus 1. Why? Because the number of marked nodes are actually decreasing when we unmark a node, right? So the mh final will be less than mh initial, right? But here we are multiplying 2 to the change in the marked node. So this will be 2 into minus 1, right? So if we talk about the total change in potential, it should be change in the number of trees plus change in the number of marked nodes. So change in the number of trees is 1 plus change in the number of marked nodes. So that is 2 into minus 1. So this is minus 2. So this is minus 2. So this uh, amortized cost comes out to be as 2 minus 2, 0. So the amortized cost comes out to be 0. Now this is for a single iteration. Now this amortized cost is for a single iteration. Now even if the number of iterations is actually order of n, we don't care. Why? Because 
as we have learned in amortized time complexity, as we have learned amortized time for n iterations. So the amortized time for n iterations will be the amortized time for a single iteration that is 0 into the number of iterations. So the number of iterations in the worst case can be of the order of the height of a tree in a Fibonacci heap. So that order is of order of n. So even if it is order of n, we receive this value as 0 and then we can call it as an order of 1 operation. So the decrease key operation in a Fibonacci heap is a constant time operation. And here I have not considered case 1 and case 2 and even if I would have considered those operations, I would have got a constant amortized time complexity for the decrease key operation, right? So that's it for the decrease key operation. So here I forgot to mention that the minimum of h will be updated and instead of pointing at 19, it will point at the new minimum that is 4, right? Minimum of h will point at 4. So now let us talk about the delete operation, right? So when we want to delete from our Fibonacci heap h a node x, right? Suppose we want to delete 99, right? Suppose we want to delete this element 99. So what we will do is that we will decrease the value of 99 to an element that is smaller than the minimum of our Fibonacci heap, right? So let us take any value that is smaller that, than 4. In this case, because the minimum of our Fibonacci heap is 4. So we will decrease it to 2, right? So when we decrease it to 2, so in order to find uh, the value of minimum of h, it is just an order of one time finding the minimum because we already have this value with us, right? So when we decrease it to 2, in this case, what, we, what did we do? We performed a decrease key operation, right? We performed a decrease key operation in our Fibonacci heap h for this element x that needs to be deleted and we uh, decreased its value to 2, right? Or any value that is smaller than the minimum element of our Fibonacci heap. Then because of doing this, what will happen is that because of decreasing its value to 2, what will happen is that this node will be compared with its parent, right? Now its parent is greater than this node. So it is violating the heap ordering property because the parent should always be smaller than all the descendants, right? So we will cut this root, we'll cut this node from here and we will attach it to the root, right? So I'm attaching that node over here. I'm attaching two over here, right? So we will remove it from here. We'll cut it and we'll attach it to the parent. Now, if you remember, we actually decrease the value of the node that had to be deleted to a value that is lesser than the minimum value. So in that case, what will happen is that this minimum of h will get updated and it will be pointing at 2, right? So what is this? What did we actually perform over here? We performed a decrease key operation, right? We performed a decrease key operation on a Fibonacci heap h for a node x that needs to be deleted and we changed it or we decreased the value of that node to 2 or it can be any value that was that is smaller than our minimum of h which was 4 earlier, right? Then what we need to do because we need to delete this node from our Fibonacci heap then we will perform the extract minimum operation. So we have learned the extract minimum operation Fibonacci heap in my previous video you can go and watch it. I'll provide the link to that video in the side button. So when we perform the extract minimum operation, this node will finally get deleted. So basically delete operation is nothing new. It is the decrease key operation, which we learned just now before delete operation and the extract minimum operation that I've taught in my previous video. So that's all for Fibonacci heaps. In the last four videos, we have learned many things about Fibonacci heaps right from what are Fibonacci heaps to their advantages and then we moved on to some basic operations like the union of two Fibonacci heaps, finding minimum, creating a new heap and inserting an element. Then we saw the extract minimum operation in the previous video and in this video we learned two operations that is the decrease key operation and the delete operation. So share these videos as much as possible and let me know in the comments if you like this video or if you have got any suggestions. So let's meet in the next video where we will start another interesting advanced data structure.